Everybody, it's Friday already, and we celebrate the feast of Pope John, St. John, not John Paul, but John, Pope John the 23rd, who initiated Vatican II back in the early 60s. So I read from Luke chapter 11, we get verse 15. When Jesus had driven out a demon, some of the crowd said, By the power of Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and the house will fall against house. I just feel I have to say something about good old Pope John the Twenty Third. In fact, they used to call him good old, good Pope John. He's short, stout, chubby, I guess, but he had a good sense of humor. And yet, when they elected him Pope, they felt they think he was not the youngest, and they said, "Well, just elect him and keep things steady as they're going, and he won't create any waves." They thought he was a safe choice, but actually, he created, I guess, in somewhat of upheaval with Vatican II. I know a lot of people today sometimes blame Vatican II for the problems we have today, but, and, you know, things may not be working. We don't have the same vocation, the same attendance. I don't believe it's because of Vatican II. Hmm? The world was changing. The church had to change, all right? It was an upheaval, political upheaval, the social mores upheaval. It was just a different time, the violence. It's just, so the church couldn't simply live in its own little world. It had to, like he said, open up the windows and bring in fresh air. Mm -hmm. And those who left, I don't, you know, priests and nuns, or what kept them in there? What, do you, what, what made you, what, what was your, your attraction? The Latin? And so no more Latin, it makes you leave? So maybe other, you know, things going on in their life as well. I, I think the church, you know, and, be, and we gotta be careful. We can't make Latin an idol. You know, somehow that's God ordained. That's the only way. You know, it's 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 to open up and open this to other people, to other faiths, and to be open. Anyway, I just want to say a little story about Pope John. He had a good sense of humor. He had a good understanding understanding about himself. He confessed that he had some difficulty in falling asleep at night. On the night of the memorable day that they announced the convocation of the Second Vatican Council. He, so he announced it, and, you know, he thought about it, and now he told, let's do it, and all of a sudden they made the announcement, and he realized, okay, there's no turning back. And he's probably thinking, oh boy, did I do the right thing? Oh, he's scared. And so he was, had a hard time sleeping, probably thinking all things that can go wrong, what if this doesn't happen? This would be all um, because of me. So this is what he said to himself. He talked to himself in this way. He said, Giovanni, why don't you sleep? Is it the Pope or the Holy Spirit that governs the church? It's the Holy Spirit, no? Well then, go to sleep, Giovanni. And so he did. I think that device could be you know, used by all of us. You don't have to be a Pope or a Vatican Council, a big you know, uprising like that. Our life, we all have things going on that keep us awake. Why just last night I woke up a little before two and couldn't fall asleep. My mind was, you know, begin thinking. Think about the homily for this weekend and couldn't quite shut it off. But sometimes we get to tell ourselves when we face different difficulties, problems, we don't know which way to turn, or we're worried about a loved one. Ask yourself this, not just, you say, who the Holy Spirit governs the church, but doesn't, who governs the world? Do we have the Holy Spirit? You say, well, yes. And does not God love this in me or love the individuals I'm praying for? Yes. Okay, then. Go to sleep. Leave it in God's hands. Surrender to God's hands. That's our faith. Let go and let God. Amen.